All right, try that. And we're just waiting for Audacity to finish. All right, so uh, say what you will about Apple, but MacBooks are, for the most part, relatively reliable. Um, the problem is, is that getting a MacBook, uh, or at least the one that I've got, a MacBook Pro, becomes a real problem when you want to tinker around with Linux. But I think I may have found a solution, and it comes in the form of Solus... Solus. Solus Project? Solus? Solus 3? Anyway, so that's what we're going to check out today. Okay, there it is. So now we should be able to get audio uh, like that. Hopefully that sounds better. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. Um, I've really enjoyed playing around with Linux for, for years. Um, but to be frank, I don't have the time and I guess the patience anymore to be fussing about with trying to get it to work. Um, and so to that effect, I was still very interested to try out something in the Linux world. And uh, I guess seeing the Solus project or what was Evolve OS, uh, you know, grow and develop over the last few years, I was really curious to give it a try. And so I'm just gonna kind of summarize my thoughts and my ramblings into hopefully some sort of coherent video that talks about Solus, but more specifically, I guess, my journey of trying to fit in what I do now on, on a day-to-day -day basis into a Linux-based system because honestly it's been a little while since um, since I've tried to do that and, and since my workflow has kind of diverged off in many different directions. Okay, so this is what the desktop looks like. Um, I've tweaked it a little bit, but really not that much. Uh, so the budgie desktop is is what this desktop environment is based around. So that's kind of what you see here on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, in terms of the software you get, it, bleh, it's, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's mostly just the standard stuff that you've come to expect from most Linux systems. This is where I'm both really excited, but also a little bit dubious. As Solus does use its own package management system, that's not a derivative of of Ubuntu or Debian or Fedora or any of those big names. So when it comes to package management, you would think maybe that it, it maybe it might be a little bit lacking in terms of what software is out there and available to you. But Solus comes at a really good time in Linux history where we have the introduction of Snap or Flatpak. And both of these tools are fantastic when it comes to having a much more universal platform for software to be installed on and, uh, and updated without having to make it for every single package management system under the sun. Um, so as you can see, even in the third party um, section here on the software center, they've got some decent choices. And then obviously if you go to, um, if you go to Flatpak or what is it, flathub.org, and if you go to Snap, which let, you know, what the heck, let's just have a look. You can see a lot of different Linux apps and games that are all available to be installed via the Flatpak or, or Snap system, which I think is great. It means quick updates. It means uh, things are siloed off and you don't get dependency hell every, try, every time you try and update. And for a rolling system like Solus, I think this is a huge technical step forward and a bit of a triumph, in my opinion, um, to be able to get to this kind of level. So obviously, Having said all that, there are plenty of software that's available in the repos and stuff that I honestly wasn't expecting to see there. Um, and the software center, while it is functional, it is relatively Spartan and you do kind of have to know what you're looking for. Um, but they do a decent job in categorizing things and breaking it down. And then there's the whole thing about trying to get Linux running successfully on a MacBook. That is a whole beast in and of itself. And honestly, it wasn't something that I, I knew there was going to be some hitches, but um, I've tried quite a few different, quite a few different things. And um, Solus actually turns out pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'll give you some thoughts on that as well. Things like um, EFI booting, it, it natively supports UEFI booting, as do a lot of Linux distributions, but it, it varies from distribution to distribution as the way that it handles um, specifically a MacBook's boot order. Um, and so you can get situations where you've got to do a third party bootloader, sometimes it can work in, um, but it prioritizes the Linux boot over the Mac OS boot. Solus is very non-aggressive in that it does actually give 
um, it does actually give precedence to Mac OS first. And if you want to boot into um, if you want to boot into Solus, then you need to hold down the Alt key as you're booting, um, which I personally think that's a better way of going about it than to um, than to kind of force it on them uh, because it leaves your system feeling still like a MacBook, but you're just choosing to boot into a different operating system. It's just a nice touch. Um, now, what I will say is on the hardware side of things, it's still not a bed of roses when it comes to uh, getting the software to run perfectly on a MacBook, primarily for two big reasons. Um, first of all, um, high density, uh, high pixel density displays, or what are they called? HIDPI or something like that. High DPI displays are still a little bit hit and miss in the Linux world. And um, I guess to give you an example, um, I'll launch Audacity here, which I just installed not that long ago. Uh, hopefully it doesn't completely train wreck the audio. Um, so actually I should probably go check that. But as you can see, some of the controls are super duper small because they're not scaled up to the two, two times uh, to the two times system. So high DPI displays are one thing, and that's kind of universal across the Linux world. We're only the Linux community is just starting to get its head around how to scale these things effectively, and so there are a few kind of hiccups every now and again. But on the whole, it looks pretty crispy and pretty sweet as. Uh, now the other issue when it comes to MacBooks, especially, and I'm sorry I'm ragging out about this, but this is kind of just my experiences, um, is uh, thermal issues. So when it comes to you, you know, you install the OS out of the box, you are going to get some pretty significant thermal. Uh, issues in terms of the fans don't really work the way that they should um, and if you have a look here in system monitor um, it's not like the CPU is working super duper duper hard and as you can see there's heaps of RAM to spare for days and all that fun stuff but having said that um, the fan is still working pretty dang hard right now um, even though it's not really doing much um, so I've got eight cores here or four cores with hyper threading um, and thermally it shouldn't be having too many issues and obviously on Mac OS it runs pretty quiet most of the time um, but on Linux it's kind of all or nothing you have uh, and I don't know if this is similar to other very thin light powerful machines um, but definitely the thermal support could do with a bit of work and I have installed the the MacBook Pro fan controller and um, and some other things like um, TLP and power top to kind of keep the power consumption under uh, under control, but it's just one of those things. The fan is cranking like crazy right now, and it's not specific to Solus. This is something uh, with Linux across the board. Um, but I will say that Solus out of the box very much managed most of the drivers and stuff very well, with the exception of networking, which I had to manually get by plugging in and, uh, and, and downloading some drivers. So that offline installation for Broadcom Wireless isn't great. But anyway, moving on. I guess the thing that impresses me most about Solus is the fact that uh, that it's a fresh stance on most things. It's what we've come to expect from a desktop environment in terms of it, it you know, functionally, it works very much like, you know, Windows 10 or Mac OS or whatever. Um, but it's a fresh take. It's based on GNOME, obviously, in terms of the desktop environment. They borrow a lot of GTK stuff. Um, but it is its own beast. It doesn't borrow from anything. It has the it has the luxury of being a lot more optimized and a lot faster in in many cases than what is being on offer from all of the KDE and GNOME derivatives. Um, they get to pick and choose a lot more what they want to do, and with the rolling release um, structure that gives them a lot more um, freedom to keep that streamlined uh, nature you know, first and foremost in terms of how uh, the operating system handles itself. So it's very crisp, very clean. I love the design choices that they made out of the box. And again, any worries that I had about software support because of how individual this desktop is and the package management system behind it, they've been long dispelled because of the innovation of flat packs and, and snap. And yeah, you can say what you will about it not being as um, well performing, but these days, I mean, who's running ancient hardware that they need? Um, that they're gonna really notice those performance differences. So a little bit of a run through of how I've set things up and then we are done here. Um, so, so far, as you can see, the only thing I've done is really whacked the panel up onto the side and enabled some, um, some uh, transparency on the panel. And again, coming down to the budgie settings here, you do have a lot of options in terms of what you wanna display, um, stuff that you wanna tweak, where you want the panels, all that kind of thing. You can create new panels and make sure that all of the apps that you want are starting with each session, which is I think is great. Um, and then when it comes to the actual system settings themselves, uh, if I can find them, 
When it comes to the actual system settings themselves, they have now since changed. Um, and so now we have a sidebar very similar to what you would see on, gosh, name your poison, Windows 10, Android, iOS, Mac OS, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, you know, that is what it is. Um, integration with online accounts is also nice to see because I do miss that when I'm away from a GNOME-based distro. And, uh, and honestly, it's just something I come to expect now in, uh, in 2018. And I think the only thing um, worth mentioning apart from that is just apps that I've got installed right now. Uh, Corbett is fantastic for Twitter. Um, I really miss having web apps from Firefox with their Prism project that went uh, extinct a little bit a little while back. So I'm using the, the GNOME web uh, app to create little web apps of uh, things like Messenger and, uh, and OneNote here as well. Um, and between web apps, Flatpak and Snap, I've kind of got all the apps that I want. Uh, Mailspring is handling all my emails. Um, Google Play Music Desktop Player was in the repos, which was great to see. Uh, if you've got a massive Google Play Music collection, then that is a the Google Play Desktop Music Player is a fantastic app for handling all that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna see how we go here in terms of uh, you know editing and running with this system as much as I can. Battery life is yeah, it's a bit of a hit and miss, but we'll see how we go. So to cut a long story short, if you if you're willing to come with me on this journey as I kind of rediscover what's possible on a Linux desktop in 2018, and we use Solus as a bit of a test bed for that. Um, I think we're in for a pretty good time. I did do a whole, uh, I did a whole blog write up ramble kind of thing about my thoughts about the open source community uh, at the end of last year. I'll put a link down in the description and you can go check that out. But it kind of summarizes a lot of the, the intention behind doing a video series like this. Um, but if you're keen for the journey, drop a like and, uh, and definitely let me know what you've been trying out and some of the stuff you've been succeeding with open source uh, software wise in the last year or so. And, um, and let me know of some keen uh, kind of up and coming new projects that you think I should check out. Uh, because yeah, not afraid to say that it's been a little while since I really dug deep into this kind of stuff, simply because it's been way too hard to get my head around getting Linux working functionally on a MacBook. This is probably my own fault, really. Okay, that'll do it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next video and uh, looking forward to where this takes us. All right, peace out, ladies and gentlemen. Bye.